I want to get your opinion on all of the news that's breaking right now. On Monday, Google said suspected Russian agents paid for tens of thousands of dollars' worth of political advertisements last year aimed at swaying the 2016 presidential election. Managers at Microsoft said Monday they, too, were investigating whether Russian operatives paid for inappropriate pro-Trump ads on its Bing search engine and other platforms. Social media giant Facebook has said a Russian company placed thousands of ads on their network at a cost of more than $100,000. CNN reports a number of ads specifically targeted Michigan and Wisconsin, two states crucial to Trump's victory in November. And Twitter reported last month that discovered about 200 accounts linked to a Russian campaign to influence the election. This comes as the head of the U.S. Senate Intelligence Committee said last week it's reached the conclusion that Russia did interfere in the 2016 U.S. presidential election. Republican Senator Richard Burr said his committee is still examining evidence to determine if there's any collusion between Moscow and the Trump campaign. Your response to all of this, WikiLeaks editor-in-chief Julian Assange. Well, I think there's a, a very good article recently published in The Nation, which goes through all of that, and it's shown to be nearly all fiction. Uh, the, the parts that you can actually determine, where you can compare with, with uh, internally con contradictory statements or other things, uh, shows that it's nearly all fiction. Uh, whether there's any truth to it, I don't know. Uh, we haven't uh, we haven't researched that. I would say that I think it's it's very concerning to see this neo McCarthyist hysteria. Very very dangerous. Uh, in geopolitical terms, and of, of course, it's an attempt to, you know, uh, to unite the Democratic Party, CIA uh, structures together in and the media in their assault against the the Trump regime. But I, I think there's plenty of uh, important things to criticise the Trump administration about. Uh, for example, their, their promises to help the working class, but in fact, uh, trying to push forward enormous tax cuts for the rich. Uh, and that these are the things uh, that should be concentrated on, not uh, leaping into an insane bout of uh, anti-Russian hysteria. Julian Assange, I wanted to ask you about Roger Stone. In March of 2016, he posted on Facebook that he, quote, never denied that Assange and I had a mutual friend who told me WikiLeaks had the goods on HRC, that's Hillary Rodham Clinton, and would begin disclosures in October. He did and they did. I didn't admit it. I announced it, unquote. In a series of tweets, which he later deleted, Roger Stone also attacked a woman who challenged him on Twitter, writing, quote, you stupid, stupid, B-word, never denied perfectly legal back channel to Assange, who indeed had the goods on crooked Hillary. Um, I th now wanted to talk about the latest Roger Stone uh, going uh, to testify before the Senate Intelligence Committee. And what came out of that? Your response to that? Uh, Roger Stone has been trolling Democrats all his life, and he's doing exactly the same thing in, in order to elevate his profile. That's all. Uh, you can look at our statements at the time. Um, he didn't say anything that I hadn't been saying in public at the time. So let me turn to Democratic Congressman Adam Schiff speaking at a hearing. Of the I, I House. just say, just that, say that the, the, effect, the effectiveness of that trolling just just shows you how mad the, the U.S. political culture has become. Um, is is Roger Stone presented as a credible character in his statements? Is that a credible is that a credible person? Do Democrats think? He's credible. Well, I think the issue is his closeness to Trump and whether or not you think Trump or Roger Stone is credible. Um, you, the, look, the, look, 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 he, he's, <sighs> if he had something to worry about, why would he be deliberately playing it up constantly? He doesn't have anything to worry about. That's, that's why he's playing it up. What do you mean? He doesn't have anything to worry about because there is no back channel. There was never a back channel. We've said at the time he's produced no evidence of it. We've complained about it. Uh, he's simply trolling uh, the, the absolute, you know, they want to be trolled. They don't care. They don't care what the truth is at all. So all they want is some little propaganda point that they can use to somehow uh, satisfy their ridiculous fantasies about taking down Trump in relation to Russia. And if Roger Stone is going to help with that, 
uh, they will give him a massive platform, and that's exactly what they've done. He sold a lot more books uh, as a result. I mean, you have to admire the chutzpah uh, and the, I suppose the cleverness uh, at which he's done it. It's in some sense admirable. What 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 is not admirable, even though it's it's really irritated us, uh, is the I don't know the the, the slavish reaction uh, of those. You know, he just throws a ball, but like that, and uh, these mindless mobs uh, of people aligned to the Democrats uh, and the democratically aligned media in the United States run after it and eventually over the cliff. Well, let me turn to Democratic Congressman Adam Schiff speaking at a hearing of the House Intelligence Committee earlier this year. On August 8th, Roger Stone, a longtime Trump political advisor and self-proclaimed political dirty trickster, boasts in a speech that he has communicated with Assange and that more documents would be coming, including an October surprise. In the middle of August, he also communicates with the Russian cutout Guccifer II, and offers a Breitbart piece denying Guccifer's links to Russian intelligence. Then later in August, Stone does something truly remarkable when he predicts that John Podesta's personal emails will soon be published. Trust me, he says, it will soon be tr Podesta's time in the barrel. Hashtag crooked Hillary. In the weeks that follow, Stone shows a remarkable prescience. I have total confidence that WikiLeaks and my hero, Julian Assange, will educate the American people soon, he says. Hashtag lock her up. Payload coming, he predicts. And two days later, it does. WikiLeaks releases its first batch of Podesta emails. The release of John Podesta's emails would then continue on a daily basis up until the election. Your response, Julian Assange, to Adam Schiff of the House Intelligence Committee, ranking Democrat. Uh, well, Schiff is not a credible person. He's he's just he's just lying uh, in in order to, you know, score political points. I had been saying all these things publicly that we were going to publish uh, information on Hillary Clinton uh, before the election. Yeah. So this is and, the, and, the, and the, the media the media got it into its stupid head. In fact, that we were going to publish it on uh, October fourth, and that spread around everywhere. And so Roger Stone's comments are, are responding to that kind of thing. But I, I, don't, I don't want to feed into, uh, I mean, I understand that there's a, a, a weird uh, psychological uh, phenomenon uh, happening in the, in the United States presently, but I don't want to feed into it because I, I think it's uh, essentially inconsequential in historical circumstances unless it leads to a war with Russia. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know what the Trump's campaign's connections are with Russia, I can only speak about us. Had no connections with us. We have no connections with Russia. So I think it's, and I think if the if the Russians have done anything else, uh, as far as I can see, uh, it's not a, a consequential nature. But so, uh, Julian, uh, this is the end. This will come out. But as far as I can determine, uh, not that I'm spending a lot of time on it. As far as I can determine, uh, there, there's not nothing of any scale. Uh, or, sig or significance. But this is the anniversary um, uh, of the email being released, the John Podesta emails. And I think it's important because what's happening in these congressional investigations, uh, Roger Stone is a key figure, whether you think he's credible or not, to have you respond, to make your point. I, I wanted to play yeah, Roger he, Stone. He, he, we, he, let me he, just play he, and you respond really, to yeah, Ro he's, Roger he's, Stone. He's, let, me, let me just play. He, Two quick clips. August 8th, this is him speaking in Florida. With regard to the October surprise, what would be your forecast on that, given what Julian Assange has intimated he's going to do? Well, it could be any number of things. I actually have uh, communicated with Assange. Uh, I believe the next tranche of his documents pertain to the Clinton Foundation, but there's no telling what the October surprise may be. Was he lying, Julian? Well, as you said, he just said that they were pertaining to the Clinton Foundation, which he was, he was wrong. He's just repeating what I said in the press. Uh -huh. So then more recently, let's turn to Roger Stone speaking to reporters following his appearance in this closed hearing of the House Intelligence Committee. His interview with lawmakers was part of the investigation into Russia's meddling in the 2016 election. 
I made the case that the uh, accusation that I knew about John Podesta's email hack in advance was false, that I knew uh, about the content and source of the WikiLeaks disclosures regarding Hillary Clinton was false, uh, and that my exchange with someone claiming to be Goosefer 2.0, uh, when viewed uh, through the context, content, and timing, was benign and innocuous. Stone also told reporters he declined to name his WikiLeaks intermediary during the interview. The reason I am not uh, submitting that name is because the intermediary is a journalist and our conversation was off the record. I'm an opinion journalist. He's a journalist. I'm not going to burn somebody who I spoke to. <coughs> if he releases me, if he allows me to release it, I would be happy to give it to the committee. I'm actually going to try to do that. Now, that, of course, Roger Stone isn't a journalist, but what is your response to what he's saying right here, that there was an intermediary between you and him who is a journalist? Uh, the, the, the United States uh, political culture has gone mad. Uh, Roger Stone is trolling epically uh, the Democratic political class in order to elevate his profile. And uh, it, it's sad to see that democracy now is buying into it. Presenting the news is not buying into it. Presenting the news is having you respond to what he's saying, because you are the center of this, um, in this particular case. And it's important to hear your voice. Um, uh, oh, look, look, Amy, look, Amy I'm, I'm getting annoyed. Uh, there is a historic event occurring this afternoon in, involving Catalonia that could well change uh, the nature of Europe, uh, what forms of repression are acceptable within the Western world, and what moves um, populations can take in order to resist repression and come together to, to uh, secure their self-determination. Uh, this has been the greatest Gandhian project that has occurred. Million, millions of Catalonians turning out uh, to vote in the street, uh, being beaten aggressively uh, by Spanish security forces, being hacked by Spanish security forces, having their telephone exchange occupied, having their political leadership arrested, uh, being threatened, as we saw today, uh, with, with re rebellion and put in prison for a minimum of 25 years. That is going to spread throughout the Western world. The, the lessons of this are going to spread throughout the Western world to, yes, to successionist movements, uh, and, but also to the states trying to repress them and to repress people's struggles for self-determination in general. The discipline with which the Catalan population have carried out uh, their referendum is astounding. Astounding that millions of people uh, going to the polls, being beaten by the police, and not one image of them fighting back. Not one image. Uh, that's incredible discipline. It's similarly in their marches and so on. And uh, if the US left is not absolutely obsessed uh, with what is happening there and the redefinition that is occurring of the nature of the relationship between population and state, well, I mean, uh, I have no time for you.